the Diamond Sutra, the Dialectics of the Mind. Mind always plays the game of duality. If you try to control it, it will create problem. It is better to play the game of dialectics. Just as a scientist makes a hypothesis and goes on negating all the possibilities, it happened with Thomas Alva Edison. He was working on electricity. Each time he did an experiment and he failed, people started making fun of him, tried to discourage him in every possible way. He had already done 350 experiments and all of these have failed in generating electricity. Then it happened. People, when they asked him, he said, instead of saying that I have failed so many times, why can't you say this, that in order to arrive at this conclusion that electricity can be generated, there may be a certain amount of possibilities and out of these possibilities, 350 possibilities, you say that I have failed in a way, may be true, but I have excluded 350 possibilities already. Now, if the number of possibilities is 500, that means I have to experiment only 150 more. I have come very close to my experiment. This is the way that we can use the dialectics of negative and positive. All those things that go in pairs. Go in pair means positive, negative, wherever there is a duality. I enjoy the game, the play very much. Every weekend, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, I wait eagerly, wondering what will happen when the curtains will rise and bring a new overflow each time when meditation begins. Just as you do not know what will happen, I also do not know what will happen, what talk will begin, what will be the overflow, what will be the topic. I overflow with you, but it brings laughter, not tears. Where are the tears? And what is the relation between laughter and tears? Laughter and tears are not different. They are two sides of the same coin. There are two types of people, the tear people and the laughter people. Those to whom tears are natural and those to whom laughter is natural. These are two types of people always found everywhere. The whole existence is divided into duality. Man, woman, yin and yang, positive and negative, day and night, life and death. So there is this division. The laughter people and tear people. You can use now a scientific method of making, an, making a hypothesis. Just as Thomas Elva Edison used in that experiment. When you look at it, 
the nature of the tear people are those who are tear oriented they are influenced they are easily in going and when you go in the deeper you go in the more and more into your eyes you will be filled with tears sometimes these tears may be unshed other times these will be overflowing profusely extroverts should follow their way in their life laughter will be the overflowing energy and in case of tear oriented people going within deeper will be the way of overflowing energy for extroverts whose energy overflows love will be easier for them and meditation will be difficult for the introvert on the other hand meditation will be easier while love will be somewhat difficult tears will be easier laughter will be somewhat difficult so you will start the journey from one side either from the side of the tears or from the side of laughter whatsoever comes to you naturally just follow your own way and why and by you will see a transformation coming when you have touched the extreme for example if you go on laughing and you reach to the other extreme the utter extreme tears will fall there will come a moment in laughter when laughter will start disappearing and tears will take control of everything if on the other hand you are tear oriented and you are following the route of tears you go on crying tears are flowing profusely to the very end suddenly you will find a change is happening laughter will arise spontaneously the revolution has happened and the revolution happens only from the extreme revolution always happens from the extreme or that truth is only found at the extreme but buddhists cannot accept it it is very difficult because they believe in the middle way the middle path the golden mean buddha's path is known as middle path or madhyam nikaya the middle path revolution happens only from the extreme from utter extreme unless you reach to the utter extreme there is no experience of truth these are the buddhists who claim to be the custodians of the way of buddha truth is at the extreme this or that only at the extreme either take your love to the extreme or take meditation to the extreme buddhists have patience they are not like others who start fighting even the patience has a limit one buddhist could not tolerate it although buddha had said to tolerate he stood up and said this is too much have you forgotten completely that buddha's path is known as middle path then i remembered and said true i know but unless you are at the extreme middle 
there is no truth. I was talking about the extreme. It has nothing to do with the middle. If you are at the extreme middle or exactly the middle, then again truth can happen because truth happens only when there is extreme, exact middle. From the extreme alone, the pendulum swings towards the other polarity. You have a pendulum hanging, it moves, swings from left to right, but when does it change its direction? And one day you will see, your laughter will bring beautiful tears, and tears will bring a meaningful laughter in you. This is a scientific inquiry, but you need not make any declaration if you have experienced. If you have experienced, indeed your very existence will be the declaration. Whichever direction you begin your journey, you need not declare. At least you need not ask. If declaration comes, it comes. What can you do? One who has experienced God cannot decide anything, not even this whether he has to declare or not. One who has gone through the process of dialectics by making the hypothesis, one who has experienced God has dropped the mind. Now whatsoever happens, he will be into it and he will be totally into it. The drop has become ocean. The ocean is drop now. The solution and subsistence have happened. God has taken possession. Now it is up to God to declare or not. If God wants the declaration, it will certainly happen. God will speak through the instruments of one to whom this experience has happened. This is what happened to Al Hilaj Mansur. His master Junaid said, I know it has happened to you. But why do you have to declare it? And Alilaj said, what can I do? If someone has taken possession of me and he wants to declare it, there is no question of ego. You may think it is a question of ego or khudi or nafs. It is not so. I have used three words, nafs, khudi, ego. These are the different stages. Nafs is the beginning. Ego is hodgepodge in English language, using everything not clear demarcation. Nafs explains arising due to the functioning of the body, mind, and various other centers. And when you have gone through the, all these stages, then you reach to the point where you discover your own individuality, Hudi. You can call it as self. You become self-realized. But there is still a stage has to come where Hudi becomes magnanimous and that time it becomes Khuda. Khuda comes from the root Hud means self and it's as a verb it means to dig. 
when you go on digging, you discover the self, and in the ultimate, you attain to Huda. So Ali Laj Mansur said, Anal Haq, I am truth, Anal Haq, I am God. His master Junnat told him, Mansur, this is not right. You will get into trouble. I also know, but I have never declared because you know these fundamentalists who are all around, they will kill you. But Mansur said, what can I do? When he declares, what can I do? Suddenly he catches hold of me and declares. Junaid was so afraid that he expelled Mansur from his school. He said, you go away, you go somewhere else, you will get into trouble and you will also get me into trouble. But Mansur said, what can I do? If he wants to get into tr trouble himself, what can I do? And he got into the trouble. But it was true that he could not do anything. He declared at the last moment from the cross, Anal Haq, and burst into laughter. When they went to Pull him, out, pull him out of the prison cell, they found it was very difficult to bring him out because in the cell there was nothing else but light all around. Light all around. When somehow they caught hold of him and that too at his own will and pleasure, Someone asked from the crowd, if you can still deny, if you can still say that you were wrong in declaring yourself God, there is a still hope that you can be forgiven. He laughed and said, but what can I do if he declares? And you are asking me, can't one declare that one has experienced God? If God declares, it is good and perfectly okay. If God is not declaring, you please keep quiet, leave it up to Him. The experience happened both to Junnat and Adhilaj. Through Junnat, the declaration did not happen because he did not have the courage. While through Alhilaj Mansur, the declaration came these are two extreme situations. The declaration or no declaration is in the hands of God as he has taken possession of you. Donald Walters writes, a few years, few years ago, I met a man who was holding forth somewhat drunkenly and with massive self-importance. On his version of how the universe ought to be run, I forgot how it came about. But I happened to mention that I thought I had met perhaps six people in my life who knew God. My companion held out a huge, hairy paw, shake, he cried hoarsely. We yeah, are just met the seventh. Donald Walter writes that he could not believe that this man has experienced God because he thinks how if you have experienced God, you will declare so blatantly, shape, we yeah, are just met the seventh. However, that is not my opinion. It is possible because sometimes God is hoarse, sometimes very polite and other times very hoarse. God comes in all shapes and sizes. Everything that we see around is His creation. 
Sometimes his hands are very smooth, other times very hairy. He comes in all ways. His ways are mysterious. So if he wants to declare through you, go to the house top and let him declare. But if he does not want to declare and you declare on your own, you will get into trouble. If he wants to get you into trouble, that is his business. But never decide on your own, otherwise it will be just an ego trip. Reading this story of Donald Walters, I felt very much for the man who said shape. Yeah, just met the seventh. However, Walter writes condemning. He condemned this and he wrote in condemning manner. He thinks this is not the way. But who is going to decide what is the way? No one should decide. Who am I to tell you that you should not declare? If he wants to declare, who am I to tell you the otherwise? Let his will be done. But remember always it should not be your decision. If you decide to declare, that simply means you have not known. Then mind is playing the greatest megalomanic trick. Then mind goes, mind is going mad. So you can play the game of dialectics. Use this way or that way to enter into the innerness. And you will realize you have arrived home, attained to that which is needed to be attained.